Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. We're so grateful you're here today to worship the Lord together. Let's begin with a word from Psalm 36, verse 7. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father God, your love is precious to us, O God. We want to come, we want to take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Father, we pray that your spirit would be present with us this morning as we worship your name, as we glorify your greatness and sing praises to you. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this morning, our first praise hymn is page 54 in the red hymnal. Great is thy faithfulness, and we'll sing all three verses. Please stand and sing. Father God, your faithfulness is great. We come and we trust in you. And we rest in you. And we love you, God. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. Good welcome to worship this morning. A couple of announcements as we get started. First off, uh, Together Tables are happening uh, this weekend and next weekend. We had one yesterday. We've got, I think, two today, one next Friday. Uh, just a great time of fellowship and together. I've told everybody, so everybody knows, you've all heard it, my one request, two requests. One, get to know someone you don't know or get to know something about someone you didn't know before, Okay. So, like, I hope by the end of it, you've learned something new. Like, yesterday I learned that Miss Dana used to ride uh, her horse through a pond and played on an island over there. So, I just, I didn't know that before. So, I, you know, learned something new about someone. And take a picture. Just take a picture, send it to me. So, we have documentation that these things happen. So, looking forward to that. <coughs> Second thing, after worship today, we'll have a church uh, business meeting. So, if you're a member, hang out afterwards for that today. And then, uh, third thing, uh, Vacation Bible School is coming up July 27th through 29th. Cedar Rock Express is the theme. We've got sign-up sheet down here if you'd love to, um, to serve and, and help us serve these kids and share the good news of Jesus with them. Uh, one last thing also, we do have, again, uh, uh, directories, uh, membership directories. Uh, we've got some there at the front, some in the breezeway. Yeah, those two places, and uh, so updated membership directories. If you see something in there we need to fix, let us know, and we'll get that fixed as well. So big shout out to Zach for taking on that arduous task with great, uh, with great uh, success and what, everything else. So good job. Uh, so those are the announcements. As we transition to our time of prayer, some things we want to lift up in prayer today. First, uh, we want to lift up, really want to lift up, Casey and Danielle, they've had a really hard week with friends of theirs uh, going through hard times. And so we want to pray for, with them, people they know, the family of Jeremy Miller, uh, the family of George LaRoque, and the family of Eddie Boyette. Uh, and I want to pray for Casey. They, he's, there's a funeral this afternoon, his, his, his friend's son, and I understand Casey's going to be speaking at that. So I just want to lift Casey up in prayer. Um, and I uh, pray the Lord wraps his arms around him and that family. And, uh, and lifts them up. So let's be in prayer for, for them. Let's also continue to be in prayer for Miss Janet Spencer. Uh, her, her phrase earlier, I was talking to her, she said she just feels blessed, and uh, I just want to be like her when I grow up. So uh, we're going to keep praying for her and uh, as they figure out what's next to do for her. We're going to continue to pray for Dan Collette, as uh, Dan has a second round of treatments this week and has four more to go. What? Right on. There we go. So let's continue to pray for Dan and pray God blesses him. We want to pray for Dorothy Wilder. I understand that she was uh, taken to the hospital yesterday. She's at Nash General. Let's be lifting her up in prayer. Randy Wood has surgery scheduled for August 30th. So uh, we're going to be lifting him up in prayer and Miss Bobby uh, uh, as that approaches. Continue to pray for Willis Gupton. Uh, continue to pr treatment this Thursday. Is that right? So we'll pray for Willis treatment this Thursday. Pray for Miss Barbara Pierce. Pray for Miss Patricia Averett. Pray for the family of Vicki Jones, a uh, friend of the Braswells, as she passed away from cancer. Also, praise the Braswells and went on a world tour or a country tour and got back at midnight last night in the, ho in the, uh, not the hospital, no, <laughs> airport. There we go. They made it back, so we want to pray for them. Uh, we also want to pray for Larry and Francis Murray, Mary Helen Gupton, the family of Vernon Vaughn as well. Let's lift him up in prayer. The Leonards, the Walujos, can you pray for Miss Diane as she recovers? Jeanette Foster. Also, <clears throat> let's pray for um, uh, Dougald McLaurin. Dougald uh, is retiring soon uh, from association work. His um, reception is this afternoon at Ephesus Baptist from three, no, two to four, two to four. So, uh, so pray for him, and, and if you have a chance, swing by there and, and say hello to him uh, after 20-odd years of, of service to our association. Let's, so let's be in prayer for him. Other prayer needs we can lift up this morning. Okay, Larry Murray's sister's daughter. All right, we'll pray for the Honeycutt family. Miss, Miss Bobby said she couldn't understand some of the things I was saying. That's uh, uh, welcome to my, my, my family's world there, right? Yeah. Yeah, we, we pray for Dorothy. Yep. I thought I mentioned her, but maybe again, maybe I'm not speaking very good today. Dorothy Wilder, we'll continue to pray for her. Yeah. Next Thursday, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. 
the family of Donald Gupton. All right, we'll pray for, for him, them, that family. All right, anything else? Okay, Trent Leonard is improving. We'll continue to pray for him. And we'll pray for Zach's grandmother. Uh, she had a pacemaker put in and is having some complications related to that. Remind me her name again. Linda. Linda. Linda Love. All right, we'll pray for Zach's grandmother, Linda Love. All right, let's lift these things up in prayer. I'll pray aloud. You pray in your own seat. Father God, we thank you that we can come to you, that you're a God who knows, you're a God who cares, you're a God who sees all of our needs, all of our burdens, you're aware of them, and that you you care about these things, God, we praise you for that. We also thank you for all the ways that you're showing your kindness and grace and love to us as individuals, as a church. And God, we come before you knowing that each of us is a sinner. All of us fall short of your standards every single day. And we pray, God, that you would forgive us of our sin as we repent and bring those things to you. We thank you for the cross of Christ. We thank you for the forgiveness that we have through Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray for these many needs and burdens that we've listed here today. Folks in this room who are suffering and going through hardships. Folks that we know and love who are suffering and going through hardships. Perhaps other things that aren't even mentioned. Uh, Things that, that are on our hearts and minds, but we didn't mention it. But God, we know that you know all of it. We know that you care. And we know that you love us. So Father, we pray that you would uh, rest in you trust in you. We pray that your spirit would be present with us, and we pray for our worship service today. We pray that that all that we say and do, all that we study, all that we sing would be glorifying to your great and holy name. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next praise hymn this morning is page 137 in the red hymnal, O Sacred Head Now Wounded. Uh, We had a request for this song, and I know it may not be real familiar to you, but we're going to all do the best we can, so please stand.
Thank you. Please be seated. to the
That's right. Good job, Mama. Good job, Mama. Amen. Thank you, choir. And uh, let me brag on you guys a little bit. I, I was, uh, you know, Zach picked out that second hymn that nobody in the room knew. Y'all sang it really well, so give yourselves a hand for that. We were making fun of Zach earlier. I said, Zach, where in the, why, why did you pick this one? And uh, he said, it's really good. Just give it a chance. So we did, and uh, good job. Good job. If you have a Bible this morning, let's see your Bibles. All right, we're going to be in Exodus chapter 6. Exodus chapter 6, beginning with verse 1. And as you're flipping there, let's pray and ask the Lord to bless our time in His Word today. Father God, we come before You, and we need Your help. We come to You as beggars in need of the grace and mercy that You offer us. And we thank you, God, that you are a good and merciful God. That you meet us in our time of need. That you give us your holy, inspired, and errant, infallible word to reveal yourself to us. So, Father, as we open your word today, as we study it, as we seek to apply it to our lives, we pray, God, that your spirit would be with us. That you would help us as we learn more about who you are and what the appropriate response is to your name. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, uh, a couple questions this morning. I'm going to need your help with this a little bit. Uh, What comes to mind when I say the name Clint Eastwood? What? Dirty Harry Western. What else? What? What? Rawhide, okay. Um, I, I think of, uh, when I think of Clint Eastwood, there's this picture of him where he looks really mad, really grumpy, right? He's got a hat on, this hard, stoic, rough, tough guy. That's what comes to mind when I think of Clint Eastwood. What comes to mind when, when you think of the, the name Barney Fife? Shaken. <laughs> Say what? Shaken, okay, yeah. Um, timid. I think of goofy, playful, uh, inept, maybe. Uh, Maybe a little uh, not qualified for the job that he has, probably. What comes to mind when I say the name Mr. Rogers? Sweet, say what? Kind. Wears a sweater. (laughs) That's right, he wears a sweater. Changes his shoes when he comes inside, right? There's There's a gentleness, a nurturing nature that comes to mind when we think of Mr. Rogers. What comes to mind when I say the name Queen Elizabeth? Royal, regal, stoic, noble, strong, right? We we think of her name, we think of these things. What, What I want you to see here is a name is not just a series of letters placed back to back to back to back. A name is so much more than that. A name reflects someone's reputation. It reflects someone's character. A name, when we think about it, when you hear a name, when you think of somebody, you think about not just the letters, you think about who they really are deep down inside. And this is especially true of God. Earlier in Exodus, we saw God tell us his name. His name, he says, is Yahweh. In our English Bibles, it's translated as the Lord, all caps. Okay, so when you see Lord, all caps, that's his name, Yahweh. And as we continue our study of Exodus, we're going to see God remind Moses and remind us of his name and then remind us what our appropriate response is to who he is and who he is in his name. So first, let's, let's look at God's name, and then we'll look at the response. Verse 1, Genesis, uh, nope, not Genesis, we haven't been in Genesis in a long time. Exodus, chapter 6, verse 1. But the Lord said to Moses, 
Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand he will send them out. And with a strong hand he will drive them out of his land. Last week we saw Moses do what the Lord asked him to do. God told Moses to go speak to Pharaoh, right? Tell him, let my people go. Moses did it. But it turns out it didn't work the way Moses thought. Things got harder for him. Everyone was mad at Moses. All the uh, Israelites came to Moses and said, what are you doing? We want God to curse you. Because it made life harder for them, made work harder. So Moses just prayed this big, ugly prayer to God saying, God, why did you do this? And God responds with this. He says, I am the Lord. He says, he says you're going to see what I'm going to do to Pharaoh. I will have Pharaoh lead you out. So, so um, God answers Moses' prayer here, and he's going to do what he said he'd do. And to explain why he's going to do what he said he'd do, he reminds Moses about who he is. Look at verse 2. God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, the Lord, I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land in which they lived as sojourners. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the people of Israel, whom the Egyptians hold as slaves. And I have remembered my covenant. God says, Moses, don't you remember who I am? He says, Moses, I am the Lord. And again, that Lord is literally Yahweh. So he's saying, I am Yahweh. I'm the guy who appeared to Abraham. I appeared to Isaac. I appeared to Jacob. He says here this confusing phrase. He says, by my name, the Lord, by my name, Yahweh, I did not make myself known to them. Kind of confusing. Either he's saying, um, well, it's confusing because he clearly did make his name known to them. We go back and read Genesis. The name Yahweh, the Lord, is all over Genesis. So either he's saying here that uh, I did not um, make myself known to them in the way that I'm going to make myself known to you. In other words, God says, I'm about to do something really unique here. Uh, There's going to be some plagues. Uh, There's going to be um, some miraculous things, pillars of fire, water spreading. Maybe he's saying that this is a a new way he's going to work, or it could be this is a little mistranslated. It could be that he's asking a question. He's saying, did I not make myself known to them by my name, the Lord? Either way, God's telling Moses that I appeared to them, he says. He says, I made a covenant with them. And I'm going uh, to give the promised land to them. And now I'm going to do something special to fulfill those promises. Now, let's be clear. Moses already knew these things. Moses already knew who God was. He knew he was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He knew all these things. God told him a lot of this at the burning bush. He was aware of what God had done. Moses was aware of what God had promised to do. But Moses needed a reminder. Moses needed a reminder of what God had done. He needed a reminder of what God had promised. He needed a reminder of what it means that God is the Lord. He is Yahweh. Just as an aside, if Moses needed a reminder about who God is, don't we need those reminders too? Don't we need those reminders of what God has done and who God is and what He's revealed to us in Scripture? This is why we talked about um, uh, several months ago about the need for us as a church to grow deeper in our faith. We talked about Sunday school, how we have Sunday school, how we have times like this where we teach the Word, how we have times on Wednesday night where we teach the Word. We have those times because we are a forgetful people. It is really easy for us to forget who God is, what he's done. If Moses needed those reminders, then then we probably need those reminders too. I encourage you to take advantage of those times to, to, to latch on to those reminders of who God is. So God reminds Moses of who he is. And then he gives Moses a word to tell to his people. Look at verse six. 
This is what the Lord says. Say therefore to the people of Israel, I am the Lord. And I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will deliver you from slavery to them. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. I will take you to be my people. And I will be your God. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God who has brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you into the land that I swore to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you for a possession. I am the Lord. So we see here, as as God gives Moses the word that he wants Moses to tell to his people, he says that phrase, I am the Lord, or I am Yahweh, three times. In those few verses, he says it at the beginning. He says it at the end. He throws it in the middle just for good measure. So he wants not only Moses to remember his name and who he is, he wants his people to remember his name and who he is. And then interspersed between all those mentions of his name, like in between where he says, I am the Lord or I am Yahweh, he has all of these promises. Did you notice those? All of those I wills. He says, I will do this. I will do that. And the idea here is that all of those promises flow from God's very name, flow from who God really is. In other words, because he is Yahweh, he will redeem his people. It's right there in his very essence. Because he is Yahweh, he will adopt his people. It's the second chunk of promises there. It's because of who he is. Because he is Yahweh, he will deliver them to the promised land in Canaan, the land that he told his ancestors all about. It's who God is. God's actions flow from his character. And that character is wrapped up in the name Yahweh, where he says, I am the Lord. I think about it like this. Let's put some practical examples to this. Imagine... Uh, a boyfriend and girlfriend go on a date, okay? Maybe you, you know someone like this. You have a boyfriend and girlfriend go on a date, and they're done eating, and the waiter comes and brings the check, and the young lady grabs her pocketbook and begins to get her credit card out to pay, but the man stops her. He says, no, 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 no. I am the boyfriend. What is he saying? He's the man, and who's going to pay? He is, right? Hopefully, hopefully. All right, let's take notes, men. We pay the bills. Got it? All right, we pay the bills, we pay the checks at the restaurants. Um, All that is communicated in the name boyfriend, right? Supposed to be, supposed to be communicated. Or imagine you're at the store with one of your kids, and you're walking down the shopping aisles, and you know how kids do at the store. Sometimes they don't walk in straight lines, and sometimes they grab things off the shelf, and you have to put it back on the shelf. And Sometimes they make a little noise, sometimes, just sometimes, right? Well, imagine you're there with your kid, and then some other person in the store looks at you and your kid and, and begins uh, lambasting your kid right there in front of you. Says, what, what's wrong with you? Put that back. What are you doing? And, and, and just being so rude. And, and that moment you say, no, 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 ma'am, sir, I'm the dad, right? I'm the mom, or whatever it is. What are you saying in that minute, moment? Back off. (laughs) All of that is communicated in the name, I'm the dad or I'm the mom. Imagine you're at work. You and a coworker having a little spat. Uh, You're sniping back and forth at each other. You know, you're saying uh, something about, you know, you didn't keep the fridge clean and and now my uh, pizza smells like your last week's Doritos or whatever. Like, and so you're having this little argument back and forth between you two co-workers and in walks the owner of the company. Yeah, that's right. And uh, he says, come to my office. And he sits you both down right in front of him. And he says, I am the boss. What is he communicating there? I'm in charge, get your act together, right? Um, All that is communicated in the name. See, we see that in in everyday lives. The name communicates something about who that person is or what that person does. And here, when God's people are fearful and unsure, when God's people do not know if they believe what Moses is saying is true, God wants them to know, I am Yahweh. 
In other words, I'm the Lord. I'm in charge. I've got this under control. I wonder this morning, do you know the Lord like that? Do you see his power and promise? Do you see his character and reputation? See, I think we need these regular reminders of who God is and what he promises to do. Just as they needed it, we need it. Because when we doubt, we we need to remember the promises of the Lord. When we are fearful, we need to remember the hope of the Lord. When we are downtrodden, we need to rest in the comfort of the Lord. When we are disobedient, we need to embrace the discipline of the Lord. And we do all these things and we know all these things because in all situations we want to immerse ourselves in the word of the Lord. And all of these things, these promises, this hope, this comfort, this discipline, this word is wrapped up in the very name of God himself. It's who he is. So in other words, God is not just an idea to be understood. God is Yahweh, a king to be worshipped. God is not just a vending machine of blessings. He is Yahweh, a Lord to be obeyed. God is not a trinket to put on our shelf of interests. He is Yahweh, the reorienting priority of our lives. Do you know him like this? And does he know you? That's really the foundational question. Does he know you? If not, if God does not know you, you do not know him, you don't know him as Yahweh, you know him as an idea, then good news for you, God has made a way for you to know him. It's called the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this gospel of Jesus Christ tells us that Jesus Christ came, that he died, that he rose again to offer us forgiveness of sins so that if we turn and believe in him, we can be saved and God can know us. And we can know him. God is not just any God. He is the Lord. He is Yahweh. And this leads to our next section. What do we do in response to that name? If he really is the Lord, if he really is Yahweh, what should we do in response? Look at verse 9. Moses spoke thus to the people of Israel, but they did not listen to Moses. Because of their broken spirit and harsh slavery. Now, we would hope that when Moses comes and delivers this message to his people, this message God delivered to him about who he really is, we would hope they'd be excited and say, Yes, we believe God. He is going to deliver us. And Moses obeys. He goes and tells God's people. He tells them what the Lord has said. But tragically, do they listen? No, oh, they don't listen. They don't care what God has said. They don't believe what Moses is telling them. It's a really heartbreaking, tragic turn of events. They're, and why is that the case? Well, we see that it says that they are of their broken spirit and harsh slavery. In other words, they are so broken and beaten down by their slavery, so broken and beaten down by their experiences that they cannot hear or receive the truth. It's a tragedy. And it could be that this describes you this morning. Maybe this morning you are broken and beaten down. You are weary and worried. And so you have a hard time hearing what God says in His Word. You have a hard time believing that He is who He says He is, that He's going to do what He says He's going to do. Your pain and your suffering maybe is like a a brittle water filter, except it doesn't keep the, the good stuff out. It keeps the, wait, it doesn't keep the bad stuff out. It keeps the good stuff out, right? Maybe your pain and your suffering are like that filter and it keeps all of God's promises away from you. If that's you, I want to encourage you this morning, no matter what your experiences are, no matter the pain that you felt, the hurt that you've experienced, God's promises are true. God's promises are real. God really is Yahweh, the covenant-keeping God. And you may not be able to see it right now. Maybe that filter is very strong. <laughs> your, your brittle water filter of your life. And you're letting uh, God's promises not get through to you. But he's still there. He still loves you. 
and he still loves his people. Well, the question now is, how will Moses respond to their rejection yet again? This is becoming a common theme in Moses' life. He's doing what God tells him to do, and people don't want to listen to him. Look at verse 10. So the Lord said to Moses, Go in, tell Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, to let the people of Israel go out of his hand. In other words, God says, Moses, I know that these people didn't listen to you again, but how about you go on back to Pharaoh, and uh, maybe he'll listen to you this time. And, And Moses says to the Lord, Behold, the people of Israel have not listened to me. How then shall Pharaoh listen to me? For I am of uncircumcised lips. God persistently charges, oh no, Moses keeps getting rejected. God tells him to go speak. He gets rejected. God tells him to go speak. No one seems to be paying any attention. So when God tells Moses to go back to Pharaoh, ask again to let his people go, Moses is like he's had enough. (laughs) And he tells God, he says, God, if my own people won't listen to me, what makes you think Pharaoh will? And he utters an all-time depressing statement. He says, I am of uncircumcised lips. In other words, he could be saying, God, I'm not a good, good public speaker. That could be what he's saying. Or more likely, this is Moses saying, God, I can't do it. Have you ever been there before? Have you ever been to that point in your life where you say, God, I can't do it. God, I'm not smart enough to do what you're asking me. God, I'm not strong enough. God, I'm not a good enough mom or dad. I'm not a good enough husband or wife. God, I'm not a good enough leader or teacher or uh, a person in my workplace. God, I can't fight this unwinnable war. God, I won't talk to someone who won't believe in Jesus. God, I refuse to deal with the problem that seems unsolvable. God, you've got the wrong person. Find someone else. I'm out. I can't do it. Anybody ever been there before? Yeah. Uh, I've been there before. Let me tell you a little story. Uh, when I was in high school, now you're going to say, Nathaniel, you were in high school, but just feel me out. You know, we, things feel more intense when they're in high school, right? If you remember that time in your life. When I was in high school, I helped start a campus ministry at our high school. It was called Youth Alive. And our goal was, was to have meetings during lunch where we could um, share the good news of Jesus with our peers at school. And when I was a junior, we got it started. When I was a senior, I was a president of this ministry, uh, 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 Youth Alive at the high school. And, uh, and I tried to plan this Christmas party. And my thought was, if we get this Christmas party, we'll get a lot of folks to come for the party, and uh, they'll be enjoying the food and the snacks and stuff, and then I'll get to share the good news of Jesus with them. And then, and then people were going to probably get saved. You know, this is what's going through your mind. This is your hope, what you're praying for. So we had cake, we had chips. We had food, we had some music, I had a CD player, I had, uh, <clears throat> y'all, uh, y'all know Mercy Me, anybody know Mercy Me? Okay, well, some of you know that Mercy Me's Christmas album, which is still to this day a very good Christmas album. I had that playing in the background, everybody's hanging out and stuff, and, and, um, and then at, at, at a certain point in the, in the party, I turned the music off and I began to steer the conversation, and I said, look, we, we're here today because of Christmas, and because of Jesus, and I explained who Jesus was. I explained how the baby would grow up and die on the cross for our sins uh, so that if we believe in him, we could be saved. I went through the gospel presentation, and I asked at a certain point, I said, if you want to close your eyes, bow your heads, if there's anybody here who wants to trust in Jesus, and it's my heart's prayer that people in this room would trust in Jesus. These people that I know are younger than me, but, but they don't know Jesus, and I really want them to trust in Christ. And I look up as I ask that question, and there's a couple of kids who kind of raise their hand and look at each other and giggle back and forth and stuff. It was as if to them it was just all a joke. And uh, it was at this moment I kind of thought to myself, what am I doing? I'm not cut out for this. I'd already felt the Lord sensing in some sense a call to ministry. I didn't know what that looked like. But I was so discouraged, and I said, God, I don't want to do this. I don't feel like... Uh, any of these typical Baptist pastors, right? I I don't feel successful at any kind of evangelism. I don't know how to do this kind of thing. And so in my own high school senior kind of way, it's like I was telling God, I'm out. I don't want to do this anymore. You ever had a situation like that? Whether it's in something like this or in your workplace, say, God, I'm out. I don't want to do this anymore. Look at verse 13. This is how God responds to Moses' comment that he's out. 
He says, but the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and gave them a charge about the people of Israel and about Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt. As if God says to Moses and to Aaron, after this emotional outburst from Moses, from, from Moses again, he says, God, I, wanted, I don't want to do it. And God basically tells him to do it anyway. <laughs> because ultimately, if it's going to happen, if Pharaoh's going to let them go, if the Israelites are going to go out of Egypt, it's not going to be because Moses did it. It's going to be because God did it. And maybe, maybe just maybe, God allowed Moses to fail all those times so he could learn this vital point that Moses couldn't do it, only God could. This was a lesson that Moses needed to hear. It's probably a lesson we need to hear. See, God calls every single one of us to walk in obedience to him. We use the phrase uh, uh, earlier in the, in the year, and I keep coming back to this, the idea that we want to grow deeper in our faith, together in love, wider as we reach others, and higher in worship. This is the call that God puts on every believer's life. And, you know, honestly, on our own, we can't do that. We can't make anyone trust in Jesus. We can't make anyone obey the Lord. We can't do these things that God has called us to do because we are sinners just like anybody else. But God charged Moses with an impossible task, and he has charged us with an impossible task. And if it's going to happen for him, or for me, or for you, he's going to have to do it. If someone trusts in Jesus as Savior, it's not because we did it. It's because God did, right? If someone repents of entrenched sin, it's not because I did it or you did it. It's because God did it. If our church is to, to continue to reach our neighbors with the gospel, it's not going to be because we did it. It's because God did it. And if you are to be the parent or the spouse or the worker or the man or woman God's calling you to be, ultimately, it's going to be because God did it. There's something humbling about coming to this realization, but there's also something freeing. Since we aren't the ones who have to do it, we simply obey the Lord every step of the way. When it's uncomfortable, when it's scary, when we'd rather not to, when we're like Moses and we keep going and every, every door seems shut, when we're like me in high school and we keep sharing and everyone thinks it's a joke, we keep obeying the Lord and let Him take care of the rest. Will we let God lead us as individuals? Will you let God lead you? Will I let God lead me? And will we give God the glory since ultimately, as we see in Moses' life, as we see in our lives, God is the only one who deserves the glory? End of question, end of statement. Ultimately, as we see here, God was going to deliver his people, wasn't he? And it wasn't going to be because of Moses. <laughs> it was going to be because of God. Moses could do what God called him to do. We can do what God calls us to do. You can do what God calls you to do, not because we worship just any God, but because we worship Yahweh, the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the covenant-making, promise-keeping, life-sustaining, gospel-delivering, kingdom-building, sin-destroying, world-changing, all-powerful, triune God of the universe. That's the God that we worship. His name is Yahweh. This is who I want to live my life for. What about you? What about you? Let's pray as we conclude this morning. Father God, as we look at who you are, we are in awe of your character, of your kindness, of your reputation. And we humbly stand before you and say, God, when we see what you've called us to do as believers, when we see what you've called us how to live the Christian life, we can't do this on our own. Whether you've called us something big or something small, we need Jesus. We need Yahweh. And Father, thank you that when we come to you in this humble posture of need, that you meet us right where we are. That you do your will, not because of us, but because it's your glory and your sovereignty. God, we thank you for your kindness and goodness. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
If you would uh, stand, we want to sing hymn of invitation number 10, How Great Thou Art. And as we sing this song, I want you to think about how great the Lord really is, who he really is, and sing this song of praise to him. Please stand, How Great Thou Art. Let's sing that chorus a cappella together. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. God, when we consider how great you are, when we consider your character, when we consider the name of the Lord, we are in awe. God, we pray that you would help us to live lives in all of who you are in obedience to what you've called us to be and to do. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we'll have our business meeting in just a moment. So if you're a Cedar Rock member, hang around. We've also got VBS sign up. But let me dismiss uh, the rest of us here uh, with a, a word from Romans chapter 11. Y'all can mingle for a few minutes before a business meeting. It's fine. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Go with God this week. 